with this machine and Matsura in general, you're going to have a really nice, accurate part. Good, right. good finishes, everything. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to MTD CNC. As you can see, I'm standing in front of a beautiful blue Matsura. We know Matsura has been around for almost 100 years and the first in the industry to palletize and automate these five axis machines. So we're gonna talk today with my buddy Richard about horizontal machining. Now we know some of those benefits already, right? When we think of the coolant flush, the chip evacuation, the ability to get better finishes, but what goes into this ginormous machine is some of the rigidity and precision that you don't always find on machines this size. So this is Richard. We are here at RSJ Machining, and we're gonna talk about why he invested in this beautiful blue machine. Richard, let's talk about horizontal machining with Matt Sir and why you dove into it. Well, I really, uh, I, I chose Matsura for the, a lot to do with the rigidity and the accuracy of the machine. And, uh, this particular machine, um, we have a few Matsuras, but this, the 100H, uh, particularly for the fact that it's a horizontal, it's a 50 taper, a lot of power, and um, it's really accurate for being a big machine. I mean, we can machine uh, 40 inch diameter by 30 inches tall. It's a great big piece of material. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's impressive in itself. And, you, and so know, when you're talking about dimensions that big, from one side to the other, we're talking tenths, microns of raw. I mean, this is precision and accurate, right? It's super accurate. We've made some parts that are that are really uh, uh, really quite accurate, uh, the, the, using the entire volumetric you know, size of the machine, and been within like two tenths accuracy of location. You know, within about, you know, half thou to a thou of true position. That's like super close. Yeah, that's impressive. And I know that was part of the reason you jumped into buying this machine. But on top of that, because you needed a bigger envelope, you're also looking, well, you have to have the rigidity when you get those big parts. And from what I understand about this, Matt, sir, there's two motors on either side of the table to increase that rigidity. Am I correct? Well, big motors are actually um, constantly monitoring uh, where they're at. In fact, they're, I believe they're so big and strong that uh, they don't even actuate the brake until it absolutely until it feels like it needs to most of the time it'll, it's the motors to sit there without the brake on because they're so strong they do just hold the machine in position um, there is a brake there for for really strong you know i think when you're take, taking some heavy cuts but um no the design of this machine is definitely uh, fantastic the way that they have got uh scales on every axis it, it really is accurate and Actually, the accuracy, we don't even have to really be concerned. As long as the programming's done right, uh, the, the parts end up right. You know, the process has to be right. You can still make bad parts, but, you know, as long as you've got good programmers and the process is good, you're gonna, with this machine and Matsura in general, you're going to have a really nice, accurate part. Good, right. good finishes, everything. Yeah, I know you have right now, you're looking at four machines in less than three years. You're considering some more in the future, but you're also considering automation. And the reason I bring that up, Richard, is because you mentioned the precision, right? So you can leave for the night, you can leave for the weekend, and in an automation cell, you know when you walk in, that piece is coming off beautiful, just like you want it to be, without being overly concerned of, is it going to be okay, right? Oh, yeah. Now, we have good confidence in the machines. Um, and they do run... Uh, that's why we want to put uh, an additional uh, pallet handling device on this machine. Right now it has two pallets, the way it is. But the parts are so big, they do run a long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the other machines, the, um, the other three Metsers, they do run 24 hours, a, a lot of times all week. Not, I can't say we do it every week, but we do run them 24 hours a lot. And we are very confident the parts come out right. It's really, uh, uh, the way that the machine's built to monitor like the, even the temperature of the coolant, the hydraulic fluid temperature, the, the fact that the, uh, you know, it, it takes care of uh, collecting all the mist out of the machine and everything. It, like I said, adjusts the temperature of the coolant and everything. That it, it's really built for 24 hour service. A lot of people are uh, trying to make regular machining centers into automated machining centers. It's a little bit of, it can be done of course, but it's a challenge. That they don't hold enough fluid, they don't hold enough, they don't have the, temperature sensors in the castings and um, it's nice to have a machine that's really built to run 24 hours. That's very, very well said, Richard, and I can appreciate that. And I guess that's what you get when they're the first in the industry to think of this concept and implement it, right? Yeah. yeah. And the fact they put so many tool, the capacity, like 
these machines over here, they have over 300 tools each. I think this machine has 245 tools. And the versatility of that is, uh, it, it, it's uh, effective in so many different ways. You know, like you can have multiple jobs set up and not have to break the tools down. It's really effective. Really. I, I've, yeah, I agree with you 100%. When we think of, if it's softer materials, uh, the ability to have multiple jobs on here, multiple, or if it's harder materials, tool redundancy, right? Some of the, something we don't think about oftentimes is if we're running a bunch of jobs and we don't have enough tool holders, that's longer downtime than some of our setups from yeah. time to time, right? Yep, yeah, exactly. Of course, then the, the machines have all the capacity to probe. So if you do, if you are running tough materials, you can have your probing cycle come in and see if, you know, if you have to, you can change it to a sharper tool. Um, it's nice to have all those uh, pre preventative and precautionary uh, systems built into the machine. You know, the scheduling, everything, it's just so nicely done. It's all one package that's put together real nicely. So here, you're in San Jose, beautiful area of the, of the country, by the way. Uh, one of my favorite places to visit. So here in San Jose, you have the uh, privilege to work with the Selway family, and they also work with Matt Sura as well. What's the relationship like with Matt Sura and with Selway when it comes to service, support, questions? Anything like that that you might have come up? Well, they've been very, very helpful. Uh, Selway's uh, one of the reasons why I ended up going with the Metzers is because Selway's been really good to me as far as support goes. There's some, been other machines that we purchased from them before we got the Metzers, and they were, they, you know, they were very good with service, always respectful, always trying to um, go the extra step, make sure I was, you know, the company's working. If the machine's down, it's not so much about respecting me, but that helps too. But it's about getting the machine running, you know. And they, they, they really prioritize that well. And the fact that they carry Matsura has exposed me to, you know, their distributorship for Selway so distributes the Matsura here. Um, over, over, you know, during my experience with Selway, I learned about the Matsura and then uh, realized that that's, that's something we need to do. We need to have, first off, it was the automation part of it. With these machines, they hold 32 pallets, and I really wanted to be able to run overnight, you know. It's, it, it is true we're having a shortage of um, a shortage of good help, uh, good people. But now you can have your good people run two or three of these machines, pay them a lot more, send them to get trained. They're happier than ever. We need less people, and we make more parts. Hey, Richard, if I don't stop this interview, you're going to take my job. You're so good at this right now because you're right. We're talking labor shortage, skills gap. But on top of that we think, well, we all want to get paid more as well, right? So if I can do more with a machine that can run itself through the night, and on top of that, I'm not stressed out about parts not coming off okay, we can trust in these machines, you really are incorporating a concept here at your company where you can, I mean, the future looks bright for you guys here, and we wish you all the success from MTD. Well, thank you very much. That's, that's nice to say. We've worked at it for a long time. This is our 40th year in business, wow. and um, I wish, you know, like always, I wish I would have done the automation step of this sooner but i'm really glad we've done it and uh it really is working out really well and having Mansur and selway as uh, as team players it's really working out well for rsj well i know the audience loves to hear that and something i think richard just said which is a separate part of this interview altogether was i wish that i had done the automation earlier i think that's great advice for everyone out there who is still hesitant to implement automation in your company right now. This is RSJ. They're a significant company here in San Jose. A beautiful mat, sir. Horizontal machining. We know what it can do with chip evacuation. We know the rigidity of the mat, sir. We know the longevity yeah. of what's going on. So Richard, thank you so much for sharing this story with our audience. For everyone who's watching, we appreciate you, Richard, and we appreciate you as well, my friend. Thank you very much, Tony.